For decades, technology and globalization have made us more productive and connected. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook. Good morning, this is Shine Matthew, The Making of a Global World, Part 3. Today we have got two main topics, the pre-modern world and the 19th century. Under the pre-modern world, silk routes, spaghetti and potato, conquest, disease and trade. Under the 19th century, a world economy takes shape, role of technology, late 19th century colonialism, Rinterpest or the cattle plague, endangered labor migration from India, Indian entrepreneurs abroad, Indian trade colonialism and the global system. The chapter is about the rise of the modern world. The modern world means contemporary world, a modern times, so present times. The circumstances and the ideas of the present age. One of the most important aspects of modern world is in globalization. Globalization is an economic system or is the process of interaction and integration of different aspects of modernity. It is based on trade migration and capital movement. So the global interconnectedness has gone different phases. Travelers, traders, priests, and pilgrims traveled for knowledge, opportunity, spiritual fulfillment, and a kind of escape from religious persecution. They carried goods, money, values, skills, ideas, inventions, germ synthesis. Around 3000 BCE, India's first civilization, the Indus Valley Civilization, got trade links with the rest of the world, especially West Asia and other contemporary civilizations at the time, flourished on the banks of river Nile. Egyptian civilization. The banks of river Tigris and Euphrates, the Mesopotamian civilization, and the river Huang Ho, the Chinese civilization. Cowries exported from Maldives, found in China and East Africa. A cowrie is used as a form of currency. A cowrie is a marine mollusk which has a glossy, brightly painted dome the shell with a long, narrow opening. So by 7th century, the spread of disease-carrying germs right across the world as a result of these travelings. Silk routes. Silk routes were the pre-modern vibrant trade routes, a network of trade routes which connected the West and the East, was central to the economic, cultural, political and religious interactions between these regions. Silk routes mainly used for carrying Chinese silk cargoes. Routes identified over sea and land, which connected three continents, Asia, Europe, North Africa, African continent. Exercised Asia and the Southeast Asian regions, exported pottery, textiles, and spices, and imported gold and silver from the Western world. And witnessed a cultural exchange, Christian missionaries traveled to spread Christianity and Muslim preachers from the Middle East traveled to spread Islam. And from Southeast Asia, Buddhist monks traveled to spread Buddhism. Spaghetti and potato. Traders and travelers introduced new crops, the areas where they reached. Uh, crops of Kermanage. For example, spaghetti, a Chinese noodles in Italy, is an example of a cultural exchange. Spaghetti is a pasta made in solid strings. Pasta introduced by Arabs in Sicily, in Italy. Sicily is part of Italy. Pasta is a dough made of a thick, malleable mixture of flour and uh, uh, liquid. It is made from. So other food crops like potatoes, soy groundnut, maize, chilies, tomatoes, and sweet potatoes from America introduced to the rest of the world after the discovery of the Americans by Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer and colonizer who completed four voyages across the Atlantic Ocean and opened the new world for conquest and a colonization of Europeans. The Americans here represent North America, South America, and the Caribbean nations. So many of these common foods trace its origin from 
of the American Indians. A special case is mentioned here, that is the introduction of potato in Europe. Potato became the staple food of Europeans, but crops destroyed by disease. By the 40s, people died of starvation. Conquest disease trade. The discovery of sea routes to Asia and America by uh, Spanish travelers or the Portuguese travelers or by the English travelers or by the Italian travelers resulted in shrinking of the world. Ancient time onwards, India used to have trade relations with the rest of the world by having transport through the Trans Indian Ocean routes, exchanged to communities, knowledge, customs. The Trans Indian Ocean routes opened or resulted in the European entry in the Asian continent. And the world is open to Europe. But America has been cut off from the rest of the world since 16th century. America is known for its rich resources. Colonization resulted in exploitation of these resources. Silver mines being constructed in Peru and Mexico. A legend of the time just ruled over El Dorado. El Dorado is a legendary fabulous city of wealth. Many expeditions from Europe were set off to find out this, but most of these, uh, these expeditions were in vain. The colonization process in America, led by Spain and Portugal, they used conventional weapons and smallpox germs. The immunity power of the Americans were very less resistant. They were not resistant to this disease. So that became a deadly killer. The conquest made easy. At the same time, Europe, underlined in the century, faced many problems. Poverty, hunger, crowded cities, deadly diseases, religious conflicts. Eastern descents. People fled to America. They introduced many plantations, plantation crops like cotton, sugar. It promoted a kind of trade named slave, slave trade. At the same time, India and China were the richest countries of the world and controlled Asian trade. 15th century onwards, China followed a policy of isolation. Now the central power shifted from Asia to America. Now the topic is next to main section of the centuries, the 19th century, 1815 to 1914. These two years to be remembered, 1815, what happened in Europe? Three most important incidents to be remembered here. First one is the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte in the Battle of Waterloo. Second one is the signing of the Treaty of Vienna. And third one is Bourbon dynasty lost power during the time of the revolution. French Revolution raised on to power. 1914, one of the devastating wars in the history of humankind, the First World War. So 19th the century witnessed a profound changes in economic, political, social, cultural, and technological spheres. A kind of interconnectedness. And at the same time, this interconnectedness based on three types of flows, trade in goods, cloth of wheat, labor and movement of capital, short term and long term. A labor migration restriction uh, has been broken from many parts of the world. A world economy ties shape. Most of the economies during the time, self-sufficient economies, self-sufficient economies, self-sufficient Sufficiency means the quality or condition of being self-sufficient. Self-sufficient economies, the economies uh, which uh, are able to maintain a sufficient income and are consistently uh, meeting their basic needs. But that, uh, what does it mean in Britain? It's lower living standard and the social conflicts. Fewer population explosion and uh, food grain demands increased. Expansion of urban and industrial areas. Prices went up. Corn laws were introduced. The British farmers forced the British government to introduce certain restrictions on import of corn. The landed group. So as a result of it, corn laws, the laws which restricted import of corn. 
but later it was embellished uh, pressure from industrialists and urban dwellers so the british market is open for a stiff competition the british farmers were unable to just compete with the rest of the world so they left their land and the lands left uncultivated most of the farmers out of work and fled to cities or continents import of food reduced the prices and consumption rose as a result of industrialization and more income higher incomes agriculture expanded to eastern europe russia america australia to meet the demands of europe expansion of agriculture railways harbors homes and settlements required a large amount of capital and labor but financed by britain during the same period witnessed a large migration from europe to the rest of the world especially to america and australia europeans migrated to australia and to america about 50 million people right across the world it is about 150 million now this time within global agricultural economy global agricultural economy ties shape labor movement capital flows changes in ecology and technology now food from distant places labor from different countries this all a clearing of forest introduction of basic infrastructure facilities railways labor from different parts of the world especially from southern europe asia africa and caribbean islands in india Punjab region witnessed the rise of irrigation canals for turning semi-desertic semi regions into fertile agricultural land. And the settlements close by these irrigation canals later came to be known as canal colonies. So commercialization, commercialization of Indian agriculture resulted in the introduction of plantation crops like cotton and rubber, for, especially for textile industries, cotton. So trade multiplied during this time in 1820 to 1914. Uh, trade multi multiplied 25 to 40 times. 60 percent of primary products export agricultural products, especially wheat, cotton, and uh, coal. Role of technology, the introduction of modern technological aspects like railways, steamships, and telegraph, result as a result of the social, political, and economic factors. Colonization stimulated and the colonizers, especially European colonial powers, wanted to collect raw materials for their industries, especially the basic industries. British cotton exodus, raw cotton for the textile industries in Liverpool and Manchester. So colonization stimulated growth faster with the introduction of railways, lighter wagons, larger ships. Market accessibility made easier. For example, trade in meat meat was an expensive item in europe meat shipped a lot from america uh, occupied a lot of space it died uh, cattle lost weight fell little most of the cattle so it became a luxurious item in europe but after the introduction of refrigerated ships made the transport easy now it's been able to uh, slaughter and transport so that lowered the price of meat a changes in the dietary habit of the Europeans. Bread and potato are replaced by meat, butter, and eggs. A kind of a luxurious life, better living conditions. Late 19th century colonialism. Now trade increased, markets expanded, prosperity increased. But it has gone a darker side, loss of freedom and livelihood economic, social, and ecological changes. In 1885, the European colonial powers met in Berlin for paper partition. The colonial powers demarcated borders of their colonial positions in Africa by using a ruler in straight lines. The colonial powers like Britain and France expanded their colonies. Belgium and Germany became new colonial powers. By 1890s, the United States of America emerged as a new colonial power. Next topic is one of the most important topics of the chapter is Rindapist or the Cattle Plague. In 1890s, 1890, 
reinterpret how the cattle play made social and economic impact in the african continent it's a kind of european imperial impact africa is the land of abundant land small population the main source of income for the african population was uh, livestock the colonizers colonizers started to exploit the rich land resources and minerals introduced plantations and mines but they faced a shortage of labor introduced a certain changes to retain labor heavy taxes changed inheritance law one member allowed to inherit the parental property restricted free movement by 1880s rentapest the cattle plague rentapest the cattle plague spread right across europe sorry right across the african continent it's an infectious disease of ruminants infected cattle from asia expanded to africa to feed italian soldiers invading eritrea by 1892 it reached atlantic coast within five years in the southern tip of africa cape killed 90 percent of the cattle result in loss of livelihood for africans africans forced into labor market next topic is indigenous labor migration from india indigenous labor migration illustrates two signs economic growth and misery higher incomes and poverty technological advances and a new forms of cohesion laborers are mainly from china and india as plantation workers workers in mines and construction indigenous labor is contract work indigenous labor was a system of bonded labor that was instituted following the abolition of slavery laborers were recruited to work on sugar cane and tea plantations rail construction projects in british colonies and west indies africa and southeast asia they made a contract with the agents for five years in which they were offered to have a return travel to india after five years they were mainly from eastern up bihar central india and tamil nadu this were the most important reasons of the rise of indigenous laborers cottage industry got declined land rents rose lands cleared for mines and plantations the main destinations of these uh, indigenous laborers were trinidad guyana suriname and the caribbean region mauritius fiji ceylon and malaya for these indigenous laborers the moment to these indigenous as a kind of escape from poverty and oppression but they were given false information about modes of travel and working conditions so that promoted a kind of new system of slavery after reaching the destinations they realized that harsh working conditions and few legal rights been provided to them some of them tried to escape but they were caught and punished but these endangered labor migration resulted in certain kind of a collaboration of different cultures especially blending of asian culture with the caribbean culture three examples i'm given here hose the hose celebration is a caribbean manifestation of the shia muslim remembrance of muharram in trinidad and tobago and jamaica rastafarianism a religious movement of black jamaicans that teaches the eventual redemption of blacks and the return to africa and chutney music chutney music is an attempt rhythmic songs in trinidad and guyana rastafarian is promoted by a jamaican musician reggae musician named bob marley so these were the three different expressions of blending of cultures hose rastafarianism and chutney music now we have got some of the well-known descendants of these endangered labor migrants 
For example, we use Naipaul, a Nobel, Nobel Prize winner to the literature. Shipnarayan Chandrapal and Ramnare Sovan, two West Indies non-cricket players. By 1900, a lot of opposition to Indian joint labor and the Indian context of freedom struggle. 1921, the end result, abolition of Indian joint labor. But these Indian joint laborers became coolies and minority in Caribbean islands. Indian entrepreneurs abroad. Trade expanded, agricultural production increased, but need a lot of uh, financing, need for financial institutions. Indian context, well known bankers like Shikari Puri Shrops and Nadakota Chetias financed these activities in Southeast Asia, sophisticated the system of transfer, and organized corporate institutions. Hyderabad is Sindhis carried overseas trade relations. By 1860s, India witnessed emporia, curious and busy parts. Emporia is a emporia is the plural of emporium means larger retail. Curious means interesting objects. The end result of these transactions and the expansion of trade and agriculture, industrialization, people got a lot of income, higher income they are right now able to just afford luxurious life. Tourism got increased. And the last topic of the day, Indian trade colonialism and the global system. So commercialization of Indian agriculture resulted in the introduction of cash crops in place of food crops. It exported cotton. But the British farmers and industrials pressurized to the British government to introduce new tariffs. It's a decline in inflow to Britain. So overseas trade mainly carried by India's overseas trade mainly carried by British manufacturers. So in the international market there is a, the, there is a stiff competition. So Indian cotton textile export got reduced during this period. By 1800, 30% to 1815, it's 15% and got reduced to 15%. By 1870, it got reduced to 3%. But at the same time, export of raw materials increased. 1812 to 1871, 5 to 35% increase. And the export of raw cotton into Opium export to China got increased. Opium export to China financed tea and other imports, other goods from China, goods import from China. British manufacturers floundered in the Indian market. Food grade and raw materials export increased. But India faced a kind of negative balance of trade. The atlas of Indian exploitants were less. Trade surplus for Britain. For settling these problems, they introduced multilateral trade settlement, or it, it was one of the aspects of international trade during the time multilateral settlement system. Deficit with one country, so a little bit the surplus with the third country. Multilateral settlement system means three countries are engaged in trade activities. If we are having trade deficit for that particular country, it is settled with the surplus with the third. So by using this surplus, British took home charges on the interests of Indians, India's external debts and payments of the salaries and pensions of British officials in India. So that is the end of the lesson. Thank you.